All right, welcome Forex traders. Welcome to my live trading room. Uh, this is where I trade systems such as day trading, swing trading, and the four horsemen. I also have managed accounts where you can link your MT4 and receive uh, the same trades that I place on my master account. Um, so if you want to have more information on that, I left a link below. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at stats here. We haven't looked at that in a little while. All right, so swing trading sitting through a little bit of drawdown right now. You can see uh, all this red right here is this right here. So a little bit of drawdown. We take little losses and big wins. Uh, so let's take a look here at the day trading as well. Uh, a little bit of drawdown at the moment on the day trading. Have have a floating profit at the moment. Not much though. And the four horsemen also sent through a drawdown. Um, so if you are interested in how we trade here, let's go. All right, today is the 29th of December at 1.50 a.m. Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Uh, and let's go ahead and take a look at where we are. So I had a couple of swing trades on with reduce risk for the owls and uh, it was placed here and we're oh, that's my stop that's where we're at right now so we're pretty close to a stop this is my reduced risk over here this is where we're at right now so uh, yeah reduced risk on those I'm not too worried about that is a massive risk to reward ratio there so if we get stopped out a few times no big deal um i do have a long in for my cad yen right here price is currently right here so you know bad nearly break even um yeah my euro usd i actually have a, a pending order right here and price came right here uh so one thing i'm going to be taking a look at and i i did all the back testing and barely barely is it more profitable not by much but is it more profitable for when we reach the daily take profit zone like how we did here to place my pending order here instead of up here or if we have a sideways box like we have in this box right here, this is a sideways box. Uh, it's it barely more profitable to place my pending order here instead of up here. Uh, and the the reason why is because um, I let's say over a course of a year um, I have. I saved uh, 10 pips and I save 12 pips and I save 8 pips and I save you know 13 pips and I save uh, 16 pips and then I miss a trade because of that every now and then and I miss a 61 pipper and then I save 8 pips and I save 12 pips so you know um, over the course of the year every now and then I will have a missing trade but all these right here add, added up um, is, is, is it's a it's a small edge uh to do it this way the thing is the markets are always changing um, and that's why a lot of times you hear that systems don't you know certain systems don't work anymore you know I remember back in the day when and of course it's still teach this stuff um, but you would get let's do this here let's, let's clear this out uh, you in this make price uh, uh white okay so you get 
price that is coming up bah, 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 like this and then you get a, a candle that uh, let's go blue for uh, let's go do we have green let's go green okay green is up okay so we get the up candle and then we get the no, oh, that's still green. Okay, and then we get the the down candle, right? The up and the down candle. And uh, then price would reverse, right? Uh, and, and so you know this is called uh, railroad tracks or you know uh, tweezer tweezer tops or something like that. Uh, it got to the point where it got so common to where this was almost a bullish instead of a bearish. If it's in an uptrend, you, you, before it would be bearish, but then it got to the point where everybody was selling these and they were just jamming their stops right above here to where the market makers would just uh, would just slip everybody's stops like that. They, they would just crush everybody's stops. So that all, almost to the point where when I see this now, I'm like, okay, well, that's not the end of it. you know. And, you get a tweezer top like that or railroad tracks or whatever you want to call them uh you know all the people that are being taught in these courses um this is like the the beginner you know thing it was candlestick patterns and um so you know when I, you know this this is almost like a bullish event now um same thing on the on the downside if you get the you know downside and then you get the tweezers right down here it's almost like a continuation bearish type of type of uh, candlestick pattern now so that's an example on on how on how the markets do change uh over time now um pivots uh no not enough people use pivot points for it to um you know you, this is used by uh, big institutions big money you know they they use pivot points but you don't have the retail trader of frenzy that uses uh, pivot points um, so uh, you know I, they're they're solid I mean you can see how they work time and time and time again but the thing is the little small nuances are always changing and that's something that I do need to stay on top of um, so in situations like this where I actually m missed a trade here by like a fraction of a pip because before price would come more down to the M2 uh, and then up and then here price would come down to the M2 before continuing up once we reach the price target. Now I'm seeing more that we're just kind of continuing on. So here we go sideways market right in right in here we get we get sideways and at no point did I hit my entry, which was here. We just kind of continue on. If I would have had my uh, pending order just right where, where I normally have it on any other uh, valid setup, then I would have, I would have hit this one. Um, I would have taken this one. I would have taken this one. And there's others also recently uh, t -t 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 there's others recently that I, but anyways, um, I don't want to just go off of, you know, I've missed a few, um, lately, you know, let's change rules and stuff like that. So my, wh what I'm pointing out is that, uh, I'm making an observation and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till I have a large enough sample size and then go back and then rerun the numbers and see if it's if it's um if there's an edge on uh taking trades uh and starting to tr take trades here rather than here on certain setups so just pointing that out uh that's something i am going to be maybe over the over the next uh few weeks or months or so um getting a a, a more um, a a sample size pool of the new market conditions and then seeing if it's still advantageous of me to place my pending orders there or not so on that let's go ahead and take a look at the market okay um 
one thing also that has not been working out for me is the Canadian USD CAD on the Four Horsemen. And uh, this one I did take a small stop on. It was uh, 2 a.m. now. Um, let's go ahead and remove all these here. Uh, I did, did take a reduced wrist stop on it. It hasn't, uh, come on, remove. And uh, it hasn't had a profitable. It 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 back tested, um, and in years past, it has been profitable. So when I originally designed the system, uh, it was the best performer. And uh, then since then, for the past year, it it this is how it has performed individually of itself. So so this is the full horseman. And a lot of these drawdowns that you see in here are because of this is the CAD broken down by itself right here. Um, it's this is the zero line. This is the profit level right here. This is the profit level. This is zero line right here. Okay. Um, we started off in, in a little bit of profit, came right back down to zero line. Had another profit, came back right back in below zero line. Then went on a little bit of a profit run. Look like we are going to, you know, start doing well, and then uh, since then it's just come back, back to below profit line, and I need to add in this uh, stop out, uh, and that's going to bring us even lower than the previous low on that. So let's go ahead and add that in right now, and uh, I am probably going to put. The USD CAD in quarantine. I already took out size out of it, the lots that I trade out of it, and redispersed it amongst the Australian yen, Euro yen, uh, Euro CAD, uh, and I reduced it down to bare bones. And I just took another a loss on it. Um, so yeah, it's. Um, until I start seeing a recovery from it. Let's see, when, when is this here? Sweet on the 27th of December. Yeah. I don't like how it spelt it all the way. Yeah, anyways. Um. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm more than likely going to cut out the USD CAD meh, from the Four Horsemen um, until further notice, and it's just going to be these guys right here. So it's going to be the three amigos. <laughs> Uh, yeah, without the four, without the uh, USD CAD, uh, maybe I'll take a look at uh, other currency pairs and see how they've been trading. But honestly, um, you know, Four Horsemen is just my, like, more like a like a hobby trade for me. Um, I don't do any managed accounts on it or anything like that. So it's just uh, it's a fun little thing that I do. It only you know I only do it once a week. Um, it's that beginning of the week setup. And uh, the idea behind it was uh, to flip a thousand dollars into a million, um, and if I was to get a hundred percent a year for uh, for um, ten years, then then you know. So it's kind of like a little uh, fun little thing. I I quickly got to um, uh, sixty percent within six months, um, but now with with the USD CAD um, kind of dragging it down, I've been hovering right around the the fifty sixty percent level. Um, and, and it's been uh, a few months past that so I'm actually not going to at the rate I'm going I'm not going to hit that 100% for the year um, so yeah um, you know 
I'm not going to be changing uh, the system. I, I'll, I'll just be taking the, the USD CAD off. But yeah, it's just my fun little uh, trade trade setup that I have there. Um, but the real thing that I that I do is day trade and swing trade. So, uh, anyways, enough of that. Let's get into trade setup. So let's go into my white charts here. Day trade full pivots. So yeah, on that I do still have my pending order uh, right down here for the uh, Euro USD. Um, we're you know we we still can we still can come down there and trigger that um, into the weekly take profit zone. Price would have to come all the way back down to the uh, central pivot in order to reset for the Euro yen. Uh, I do have my entry for a long on the CAD yen. Um, do, 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 do. I do need to uh, update these boxes because let's see here I do have a lower box right here um, and if price does come down and then come back through again that's another buy um, situation uh, I don't this is just too far away from central pivot for me on the Aussie yen, I do have a trade setup right here on the uh, central pivot. The wick actually came down and uh, came really close to central pivot, so that is a trade setup. Uh, this is my lower box right here, so you know I would be looking for something more like this if I wanted to get in. Uh, yeah on the uh, Aussie US dollar so that would be something that I would consider and on the pound yen this is my trade setup here and here I guess either one this is my box for today which I need to highlight that and um, so yeah I'm looking for a London breakout same thing here boop 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 uh, in my box here. Let's go ahead and draw out those boxes right now. Let's draw them out. draw this one too so there's uh no hurry right now to rush into anything um, I will be here working on uh, projects and monitoring price and uh, if I see any setups or anything occurring I'll I'll uh, push play again on the recording just as a quick update 2:31 a.m. Uh, I did went ahead and reduced the risk uh, on my uh, CAD yen uh, to just below the swing point low. Alert. Day trade alert. All right, so I am getting a uh, trade alert um, on the uh, CAD yen. I already moved my stop. Day so trade that's what that alert. is for. Day trade alert. Um, I am watching the pounds very closely here. I am looking for the break to the upside. Day trade alert. Day trade alert. Again, I'm uh, kind of frustrated with uh, the euro not giving me that entry that I wanted. But uh, it looks like our CAD at the moment is the CAD yen is breaking to the upside. So. Uh, these uh, these pounds right here, I am watching very closely for a break to the upside on both of them. All 
All right, so it is uh, 4.20 a.m. And just taking a look, quick look here at the markets. A uh, possible break above here during the uh, London session. Uh, I want a little bit of uh, a, a space here, like a couple of candles closed before I um, consider taking uh, the retest of the uh, central pivot. We are getting the continued um, uptrend here on the CAD yen. Again, we took that uh, open position yesterday right there. Uh, and uh, still have my pending order down here on the on the Euro USD. Those are the only two setups that I have as a possibility, unless the Aussie. Because remember, this was was my bounce on central pivot. So if the Aussie kind of does like one of these, um, looks like maybe even the New York session, then I would consider getting in on the on the Aussie. But uh, we would we would have to test the floor first and uh, and then and then continue back up again uh, for me to consider that. So those are the options right now. I'm just kind of sitting waiting. So far, qu uh, kind of a quiet session. Okay, it's uh, 4:33 a.m. and uh, I do have the trade confirmations here on both the pounds. So I will be taking the. Uh, the retest of the uh, central pivot. We'll keep you updated. Uh, for furthermore, we are getting a little bit of a standby. We are getting a little bit of um, a reaction here on the CAD yen to the upside. So I'm going to go ahead and work on my pending orders right now on both the pound yen and the pound US dollar. We'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and placed my pending orders for the uh, both the uh, pound yen and the pound U.S. dollar with their stop and take profit limits. Sitting in a little bit of profit right now on the CAD yen, a little bit of drawdown on my swing trades. Break even right now on the Aussie U.S. dollar and uh, halfway to my stop. It's a really tight stop on the Aussie yen for my swing trade. But, uh, yeah, we're definitely getting the movement right now, making a new high right now on the CAD Yen. All right, quick little update is 5:24 a.m. So we're about uh, 35 minutes away from the New York Open. Um, I did get tagged in on my pound yen and coming really close right now for the pound U.S. dollar. Let me go ahead and transfer over. So that's the pound yen number 1937. close to getting tagged in on the pound US dollar. All right, and we just got tagged in on the uh, pound US dollar. Let's go ahead and update that as well. Okay, so that one's going to be number 1946. And we're about a half an hour away from the New York Open. We'll keep you updated. Okay, and we're out on our reduced risk Australian yen swing trade. So let's go ahead and take that off the books. reduce risk let's get into my swing trade yeah. and 
this is going to be seven, uh, three, four, one, nine. All right, uh, so an update here. We're still sitting in profit on the can Canadian yen. Uh, break evens on both the uh, pound yen and the pound US dollar. Sitting break even on my swing trade for the Australian US dollar. It is 6.19 a.m., 19 minutes into the New York session. All right, just taking a quick little update here. Still sitting at break evens for both of my pounds. Uh, and uh, here we go. Um, finally getting a little bit of takeoff here now these are really small pivot uh, zones here um, so I well you know what let's go ahead and do this let's do this let's go let's minimize this and let's go into my Cadian and let's go ahead and expand this and let's take a look at a broader view. Let's add on more. Actually, let's add on even more. So the question is, is this a small daily range, average, or is it a little bit smaller than normal? Um, I'd say it's a little bit smaller than average. So the M5 is where my target is, which is uh, which is exactly what it's supposed to be when it's a little bit smaller than average. Let's, let's take a measurement here. Let's go from green to red. Well, well, well wrong thing. Bleeds. Let's go like this here. Let's go green to red. And compare it to other days. This one was a really small day. Today is smaller than that. This was a really small day. This is a really small day. These are really small. It's about, well... So I'd say uh, we're uh, slightly smaller than average. It's about that size day right there. And about that size day. These days are bigger. These are really small days. These are the bigger days. These are really tiny ones. These are bigger days. Okay, so yeah, I'd say I'd say it's a smaller than average. So um, slightly. So the M5 is right in the middle of the weekly take profit zone. Let's go back on over to my full pivots. So yeah, so we got it uh, right up here, right into the weekly take profit, right at the M5. Getting a little bit of movement out of the pounds right now. Uh, it's good that we moved higher at the end of the hour for the pounds. Um, the end of the hour is always the most telling. So we got the move at the end of the hour 
in the upwards direction, which is the, always the most telling. You never, never want the end of the hour to go against you. The beginning of the hour, it can, it, it's better to go against you in the beginning of the hour. It's uh, 7 a.m. Just taking a quick look here at my client's account. These are the exact trades that I have uh, copied over to my client's account using uh, the service that I have provided in the link below. So if you want your accounts to be uh, traded, uh, all you need to do is sign up with my link. I charge uh, 49 and the service is uh, $20. So, um, so it's a total of $69 a month. All right, it's uh, 7.51 a.m. And it looks as if slight bit of profit right now on the pound dollar, break even on the pound yen. Um, hit our first profit target zone. That's not where we're taking profit at, though, for the uh, CAD yen. We're taking it at R3. And uh, Euro USD. I'm very unfortunate that we did not get that trigger on our pending order that you can see right down here our pending order and uh, yeah so um, that would have been our prof profit target right there not too happy about that I'm going to take a nap. I'll wake up in two hours. All right, it's uh, 11.37 a.m. So we're uh, still about three hours and 23 minutes away from the New York close and flatlined price action. Um, yeah, our pound just gone nowhere real fast. Uh, we did get a run up on our trade for the cad yen it only reached the first profit target level i actually have it at the third level since these pivots are so small um and uh, we're gonna have it looks like another entry coming in at the end of the new york session uh, we are going to be more than likely having trade setups uh for the for the pounds as well and uh this one we're done because it's reached the weekly take profit and uh, because we hit the daily profit zone, I'm going to move this pending order up to right here uh, for tomorrow at the end of this New York session. One more thing to add, we will be having the Australian. I did have the trade set up back here. Um, we do have a higher box, and so we'll be taking a trade uh, at the end of the New York session on that one. All right, it is uh, 2.52, so we are eight minutes away from the New York close. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this into my day trading full pivots. And we'll see what we have it going on here. Um, I am going to go ahead and move up my entry here for the uh, Euro USD. And uh, I will have to readjust all that uh, once we have lock on the uh, once we have lock on everything on the pivots. All right, so we do have the trade set up. I, I will mark out this box here in a few minutes. Um, still no trades uh, because we reached the take profit zone on the euro yen. Uh, I will have a, another pending order right inside here. And let's see what that price is going to be. Right at uh, Go ahead and mark out my stops and take profits. OK, 
Okay. Now to Okay, here we go. Let's see, now this enlarged this. Okay, this is gonna be my stop. And my tick profits are gonna be uh, you know what? We're going to keep it at the exact same point. And I will have to adjust that. I'm going to mark this down in my pending order now. So that's going to be number... One, eight, one, seven. It's an M2, or, or the midpoint between M2 and uh, Central Pivot, because we reached the weekly or the daily tick profit zone. All right, so we have that one, and um, I don't have any trade set up on the Australian yen, but I do have a perfect trade set up here. We're gonna have to measure this out. go three pips up and we'll do uh, 76052 what did I say it was Seven six zero five two. And of course, this all will have to be adjusted. This one's going to be an M5. Okay, so that one gives me uh, 1848. That one's the USD, AUD. Okay. Let's get into. Okay, so I am going to have a buy right in here. I'm probably going to have to adjust this one first. Since the um, we're really close to it. Here's that, and then my tick profit. Man, what a small pivot range, huh? I'm going to have to choose up here at the uh, weekly pivot. R1. And then uh, one more here is going to be the... So let's write that one down. 1868.
We're going to have lock here in about a minute and a half. Okay, this one here. This is going to be a top of the central pivot. And our spread. So we want like a three and a half pip, uh, pips from the top. Uh, we have lock here shortly in about 30 seconds so 1886 once I get these logged in I'll be able to mess around with the uh, entries and then this one is SD so by CPP okay 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 we have lock right now Go ahead and exit out of this and then mark our zones here. Let's do this one first. Okay, that's a very good entry location. I probably just need to adjust this a slight bit. This is from earlier. Make sure that my tick profits are decent. Okay, there we go. And uh, let's go ahead and move this one on over real quick. Let's make sure we get this right here. Okay, let's uh, move this on over here to the pound dollar. We'll just mark that one out. It's an upper box and we, uh, we're taking it right at a central pivot. The spreads are a little wide right now due to the closing of the New York session. And we have our take profits right at the R3. And I want to see how far away this is right here. That's uh, 1,200 and, wait, sorry, <laughs> 1,000, hold on. 126. Okay, that's fine. My average win is 166 on that pair. So that's perfect. Okay, we got that one. We don't have... Is that marked down there? Yeah, we have no trade set up on the Aussie Yen. The Aussie Dollar. This is our box right here. And then I want about a three or so pips from the top of the central pivot. Okay, we can move that down a little bit. Okay, that's perfect. This is going to come down. And I take profit. I come right down below the M5. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, pull this on over to my Aussie USD and take a closer look here. Yes, it is a little bit smaller than average, so M5 is perfect. I like it. Good, very good. Okay, let's go back to day trade full pivots. Not done yet. So we got that one knocked out. And here we go on the CAD yen. My buy limit can come up just a little bit more.
Yep. Yep, very good. Maybe actually a little bit more because of spread. We'll knock that down just a tad. I already have reduced risk on the first. Just going to match these up as much as I can. Yeah, a little bit more. There we go, perfect. So we got that knocked out. And the Euro USD. In fact, I have uh, I have the uh, location perfect right now. This needs to come down below the support level. Yeah, you know I'm gonna. It's such a small weekly pivot. Yeah, I'm taking it right up there. That's perfect. This can come down slightly more. Let's mark out our box. I think we did everything that we need to do. The rest is contingent on London session. Okay, we got that done. Okay, yeah, so everything else is just contingent on uh, the London session if we're going to be adding on any more trades. Yeah, not a whole lot of market movement today. I was expecting, to be honest with you, I was, I was expecting a bigger day today. Uh, considering that we didn't really have a big day yesterday um, and uh, you know with all the news that was coming out but uh, hey you know that's the markets nobody can really predict what's going to happen next you just have a good plan good strategy um, that over time it, it, it works out and you know that's what we do here so lately uh, last month we had a 27 percent uh, gain for the month this month we're only up by a few percent uh, so you know um, you know, it's been it's been a tough month but uh, you know some months are just easy trading you know some on other months nothing seems to go your way so this seems to be one of them but uh, we're not down we're up still anyways uh, I am going to leave it at that um, make sure you stay tuned uh, to see how all these trades go I will be recording again during the uh, London session and uh, I got my new website up and running so if you want to check it out, I'll leave the link below that, that links it to the managed accounts as well. So you'll be able to, to sign up there if you want to sign up there. Okay, we'll see you then. Take care.